Hey everyone, this chapter is going to be all about using objects and creating your own classes in Visual Basic. So this video is actually going to introduce that by talking about some concepts of object-oriented programming. We're just covering the first uh, part of the focus section in the chapter. Alright, so you might remember that at the beginning of the course, I described Visual Basic as an object-oriented programming language. Uh, an object-oriented programming language is one where everything revolves around objects. Objects are things in the code that perform actions to accomplish tasks. So anything that can be seen or touched or used in some way in the code is an object. Uh, objects have properties that describe them. They can do things. There are actions that they're able to take, uh, and they can interact with other objects. A class is a pattern that's used to create objects, so objects are created from a particular class. The class just defines what that object is able to do, what properties that object has, and how objects of this class can be interacted with. When we actually create an object from a particular class in object-oriented programming, we say that that object is an instance of that class. Uh, the act of actually creating an object from that class is known as instan instantiation. We also have the terms attributes and behaviors in object-oriented programming, which I have sort of talked about throughout this class under different words and uh, terminology and all that kind of stuff. But we use attributes to describe the characteristics that describe the object. Uh, these are also called properties. So if you're familiar with properties of controls or things like that, you already know what an attribute really is. So for example, a button's name or a button's text property or the length of a string, that's also a property or an attribute of those button or string objects here. And then behaviors describe what an object can do. Um, specifically, we have methods, which are operations that an object can actually perform. So for example, the focus method of a, uh, a lot of controls, or the trim and two upper methods of a string. Those are all methods of their respective classes. We also have events, which are actions to which an object can respond. So objects have a whole bunch of different events, like how the button has the click event, or the text box has the enter or key press events. Uh, you use event procedures to actually control the response to an object's events. So then when we actually have a class, that class encapsul encapsulates all of the attributes and behaviors of the objects that it will then instantiate. So a class kind of you can think of it as a capsule. It's holding on to all of those attributes. It's holding on to all of those behaviors and then sort of like doling them out as it's creating those objects. So we've already been using objects this whole time, given that Visual Basic is an object-oriented language. Everything that Visual Basic does is involving objects. So controls, for example, are all objects. You use the designer view to place them on the application. The controls are actually uh, instantiated automatically when we do that. It's just hidden pieces of code instantiating those controls for us and setting them up with all the proper properties and all that based on how we position them in the designer view. But they're still objects. They're still being instantiated and we're still working with them like objects. We are accessing their properties and methods and events using that dot access operator. So for example, uh, if I had some button in a program called button cal, uh, it is an object made from the button class. The button class is a sort of um, set of instructions or a model or a definition of what all button objects actually look like. Uh, and button cal, when we um, actually create that, or, or at least when Visual Basic instantiates that for us, it follows the instructions provided from the button class definition. Another class we've seen used is the random class, uh, and we actually instantiate that in code. Uh, so that's that whole statement, dim rand gen as new random that we've seen before. Uh, that is instantiating a random 
object with this whole new keyword right here, which we'll actually get into later on in this chapter. But the random class defines instructions for how random objects are created and can be used. The random class gives uh, that method that lets us generate random integers and so on and so forth. So that is another example of a class. We also have the stream writer and stream reader classes, which are classes that we instantiate objects from, but we don't instantiate them more directly like we would with the uh, randgen as new random method of creating a random object. Instead, we call methods in io.file that instantiate the object for us and actually set up different properties of those objects. So for example, um, I'm going to focus on StreamWriter, uh, the class StreamWriter right here, and there are two different methods that we've used to create stream StreamWriter objects, uh, create text and append text, both in the io.file library, and they both return a StreamWriter object the difference being is how the streamwriter object is actually able to interact with the file blah.txt. Uh, so what's happening here is that both of these meth uh, both of these um, are creating streamwriter objects, but they're resulting in different write modes. So something in the way that create text actually instantiates a new streamwriter and returns that to you is different from how append text instantiates a stream writer and returns that to you. The difference being that create text, um, if blah.txt already exists, create text just completely deletes it and creates blah.txt as an empty file, whereas append text uh, opens up blah.txt and starts adding text to the end of whatever is already in there. So they're both inside of these methods instantiating new objects and passing those back to us, but there's a difference in how they set up the properties of these new objects that actually determines whether we are uh, deleting blah.txt if it exists and starting from scratch, or opening blah.txt if it exists and uh, adding text in at the very beginning. But yeah, what we have here is just a method that instantiates an object for us that's not necessarily directly connected to the stream writer class. On the other hand, uh, when we create a new random using this as new random thing right here, we're actually directly interacting with the random class in order to instantiate a new object. And I'll show you more about what I mean in a future video. Some other objects that you are familiar with uh, but maybe not the fact that they are objects, are the array objects and the um, string objects that we've been working with for a little bit now. Uh, they all have methods and properties and their associated data and all that kind of stuff. Um, they're kind of wrapping themselves around smaller, or I, I guess they're more fundamental pieces of data, but then they provide additional methods and properties that are helpful for us when we are interacting with that data. We also have the items collections that belong to things like list boxes. Those themselves are their own objects. So the list box is an object that has access to some item collection object, which then has a whole bunch of items inside of it. All of those items themselves are objects. So we use objects all the time. Um, and it is now the difference is that we know that we're using objects and we're explicitly talking about things in, in an object oriented manner. All right. So I've shown off this, um, example before these are four sort of abstract diagrams of classes right here. Uh, the course class, the teacher class, the student class, and the assignment class like this. I slightly modified it from when I first uh, showed off this diagram, uh, but the slight modifications are not super important here. But what we have for these classes are attributes and behaviors right here. Some classes have only attributes. Some classes have attributes and behaviors. It would be also possible to have classes that define only behaviors, but no 
attributes. But when I'm saying, let's say for the teacher class, I'm saying that every teacher defined by this class right here has a name and has some list of courses, and they're able to do uh, certain behaviors like teach students grade assignments and create assignments. Every teacher that is created from this teacher class that I've defined will be able to do all of this. Same with the student. Every student has a name and has a list of courses that they're taking, and the things they can do include doing lectures, doing assignments, and studying. So we say that the teacher class, as an example, um, encapsulates the uh, attribute name and the method, this would be a method in this case, uh, teach students. But if we instantiated a teacher object, and let's say we use the name cbizirisk, uh, cbizirisk is of type teacher or has been instantiated from the class teacher, uh, but we say that the type is also teacher in this case. Um, so cbizirisk, that's the object that represents me as a teacher, uh, has a name. My name would be the string iris color. Uh, and can do teach students. I would have the method teach students, which is actually the method that I'm that I am performing right now. So the big difference here is that a class encapsulates the attributes and behaviors, whereas the object has its own you know values for the attributes, and it is able to perform certain behaviors. I very briefly want to talk about form main because, you know, Visual Basic, it is an object-oriented programming language, which means that everything is an object, including form main, or whatever you end up naming the main form of your program. But it is a very special type of class. In fact, we talked about how um, when you are writing code inside of your application, you put it underneath it some public class form main statement uh, because form main is a class. Uh, it's a very special one because it's only partially defined by you. Visual Basic does a ton of work in the background to actually transform the class definition you write into a full on proper application that can run everything. So a lot of that is hidden away from you, which is good. We don't want to necessarily see all of that, but we're still contributing to a class definition when we are creating our applications like this, which I think is really interesting. So it's a special type of class. Uh, only one object will be instantiated from this class when the program is run, and that object is actually what uh, you know loads up your application and displays it to the user. Its attributes will include uh, any properties that you set in the properties window, uh, a collection of all of the controls that you have added to the application, other things that Visual Basic adds in the background. Um, it will also include any class variables that you add in. So anything you put at the same level as your uh, procedures, but you define with, you know, private variable name as uh, some type. Those class variables are also attributes of the form main class. Uh, and the behaviors are going to be all of the procedures you write. Those will be methods. It will also have some events like the load event. Um, and then there are other things that Visual Basic adds in the background so that you don't have to worry about it. But form main is a class. We have been working with class definitions this whole time but in a very limited sense. So the rest of this uh, chapter is going to be about how we actually create our own classes from the ground up without having all this, well, I shouldn't say all of this, without having a lot of this extra stuff, Visual Basic adds in, in the background. Any class that we make will have some extra background secret things that Visual Basic has just by the nature of it being an object, but we're not really getting into that in this course. So we don't need to worry about that so much. Uh, but we'll be making, 
we'll be making classes that we have a lot more control of in this chapter. Form main we don't have a ton of control over, we just write out our methods and add our variables and set some of the properties in the designer view and that properties window, but other than that, um, you know, not a ton of control. So yeah, that is just a refresher on what object-oriented programming is. I know that a lot of this is a bit of review from the beginning of the class, but I think it'll be helpful to keep that in mind as we go forward into actually creating more, uh, or creating classes that we have more control over and starting to think about problems in terms of an object-oriented uh, way of thinking.